right here at Giant Eagle. Rich uh, made it over there, and he's like, they called up, and they finally got us some more tortoise food, and we missed out on it, the greens last time. So I'm going to go in and get them today. Right now they called, and uh, we're not going to miss out this time. Stay tuned. Oh, no, we didn't miss out. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff, even strawberries, all kinds of stuff in here, bananas, corn, and then all the greens themselves, but... Yeah, this sucker weighs 20 pounds. <laughs> so, all right, take these greens in. They're going to love it. Okay, so when I took the car in, the Clavens, there was one serious problem. They said the inner tie rod was super bad. And for some reason, you know, they said the fender and everything, they must have hit a bump. So... My brother and stuff said it was on the side. I checked. I checked with Rich. There ain't nothing wrong. So I'm like, you know what? I got the paperwork from Clavin. I looked. It's the left side, which is the driver's side. So I jacked that up, you know, got the stuff here, jacked it up. Sure enough, it's ready to fall off. So I just got uh, back from the auto store. I bought this is a special tool you need to get these inner bearings. It's an inner tie rod. Couldn't have been the outer. But uh, I'm going to take it apart, I'll film this, and I'm going to get this sucker fixed, and then I got a decent car. So, stay tuned. Alright, for one thing, it was playing it, but when you grab this, and you turn it, look at that. It shouldn't be doing that. You no, know, this one, the other side was fine, this side's not so fine. So, I already loosened the nut, I got to remove this. Actually, I got to loosen this nut here, back it off just a hair. Then I'll push this through. Then I count how many times I take it off. That give me when I put the new one, put it back on to the new one, which one I, I've already bought. I've already had the part. So once I get that old piece off, then I got to get the new piece on, then screw this in as many times. That'll get me close to where I am for alignment, put it all back together. I didn't get front and lime it, but then I should be good to go. Okay, stay tuned. <laughs> All right, I got that special tool on, as you can see. And then what you do is you put a very long extension to a breaker bar and break it loose to, you know, counterclockwise. And once it breaks loose, then it shouldn't be a problem. And then I got to get back on and get it tightened. So, but you don't tighten it real tight. You just tighten it snug. So, and it all broke loose fairly easy. So, we'll see. <laughs> Here comes the fun part. That was not bad at all. I hardly put any pressure on and it busted right loose. And you see how it turned? Now, all I got to do, take all that apart. It was a 14 and unscrew it the rest of the way. And repeat the process and put the new one on. And I'm going to be good to go. Yeah. I got so busy, I just forgot. But <laughs> I got that one on and 20 and a half times and put it up, tightened it after I put it back on and tightened that. So uh, we're good to go. All right. So save myself a few dollars. As you guys see, the van or the bus getting pretty full with stuff for the garage sale we got plenty of tanks we just gotta get that leveled and get that 2000 moved or we're just gonna have to work around it and set the tanks up and, and get it done so i'll talk to rich about that today see what's see what we're gonna do <clears throat> rich is in there showing kathy a few things we're gonna go outside he had the keys for the lawnmower sitting right here but i'm gonna pick them up and put them in my pocket and uh, see how long it takes them to notice that they're gone. You'll probably wonder when I'm recording, but we'll see. Oh, I got another message. I stole somebody's cookie. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, on uh, that message for that, your birthday gift, I got another message that it's going through transit now. It cleared customs, all that shit. So it's here, it's there. I, I didn't know it was coming from Ireland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just ordered it and heard it paid for it. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be all like this. Oh. Um, I had the, the keys to the lawnmower here. What's that? 
I had the keys to the riding lawnmower. I knew where they were. Mark. Huh? Mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I, I didn't let you look for five minutes. <laughs> I wanted to. I recorded. I'm like, all right, guys, you see the keys? He just went to do something with Kathy. Uh, yeah, he's working with Kathy. Like, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. You know. Oh, I stole a cookie. <laughs> Reaper, I will say this with the most love that I can say. You're a dick. <laughs> Gotcha, buddy. <laughs> well, Rich has had this lawnmower for two years, letting some stranger drive it. I've never even been on the damn thing. Not a stranger, as a white mayor. I've known him <laughs> since I've been 12 years old. Right. And unfortunately, you know, he's here helping and volunteering. He uh, weed whacked everything. He uh, didn't like uh, Rich's tools. <laughs> so he, he brought, brought his own. own. Yeah. He had his, his truck back here and he brought all of his own equipment. Except for the big mower, that's why he's, you know, using riches. But yeah, he's taking care of all the grass and everything like that. So awesome. Maybe I can talk him into doing the weeding. I doubt it. <laughs> and volunteer Glenn's already in the backyard. Got the front done already. There's the koi pond looking pretty good. A lot of grass everywhere, of course. But okay, I'm not sure where I think. Rich is going to start up the bobcat, move some things around, I'm not sure. He has something in mind. I'll film, that's for sure. Stay tuned. Alright, it's dead. So we're going to go get the uh, battery charger and the uh, power station and get this uh, baby hooked up. Alright, we got the good old oops in the battery charger. And I was able to get into the positive on this side and negative on that side, so we'll let her charge up. Uh, got it on quick charge right now. I don't know if he wants to try and start it. Start it. it was, I don't know how dead it was, but he's talking to Glenn right now. Oh, look, it's a little bluegill sitting there at the top of the water. A little bluegill. All right. This was the worst bridge, man, I had. I put it across here. It's a walking area. Uh -huh. It's disintegrating on the one. As long as we walk on the other three, we don't care. You know, so it's timber. <laughs> uh, wow, we're gonna have to lose that tree. Yeah, definitely, man. So here's my thought: if we cut it off oh. about waist size right here, yeah. we can put a big, huge, ten-foot round table on it. Now really? that won't interfere with Strongsville's rules about mounting something permanent here, because the tree was already here. <laughs> So I can put the table, and all the chairs, if it ever goes to rain, and we'll come out here and put the chairs on top of the table. Yeah, because that split's going. Yeah, yeah that it. tree's done. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm, you're going to want it to fall that way, I would think. Yeah, but it's cracked this way. It's going to I know, it's going to go <laughs> that way. It wants to go that way, though. You go up and tie it off, and use your machine up there to pull it. So Rich is like, start the fire. He didn't see me close. He thought I was going to go get gas and all that. I grabbed a lot of this dry stuff. Nah. So there's dry grass. I shoved some dry grass under. I lit it one time. And these guys tried burning it. I don't know how many times. But Reaper got it. Oh, that's a good fire, dude. You can feel that heat from here. Dude, we're still backing up. We're 50 foot away. <laughs> I got to go. It. 25 foot tall. Woo-wee. Reaper know how to do a fire. <laughs> Look at <Okay>. that. <laughs> For one whole summer, Hoover was here throwing oil on it, gas on it, so trying to get it running. So did John. The next summer, Reaper comes here and throws a match on it. <laughs> <laughs> a little dry grass. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Man, I, still too I, I was going to say, I still feel the heat. Got to go up. Wow. That's a bonfire. That's a cute little fire way over yonder. <laughs> <laughs> that we feel that I feel the heat from here. Wow. Any of you ever have them girls that are like that at nighttime? 
I'll tell you what, when Tracy was uh, around and we, you know, she, she used to sleep in my bed. You know, she sleeps by herself now. <laughs> but no, when she used to sleep in my bed, this is what it was like laying next to her. I had to, like, roll over to my little one-and-a-half-foot spot on my side and her four-and-a-half-foot spot on her side. You know, I can still feel the heat emulating off of her. So I'm sitting there sweating with no blanket, and she's got two blankets on. You know, it's crazy. Look at them, the fly, flames are going above the uh, zip, zip line. line. Yeah, and that zip line is 25 feet off the ground. Right, yeah. so that's like 30, 35 feet up, 40. <laughs> wow. All right, making quick work of that one. Yeah, I love a good fire. I'll get the uh, bobcat out here and we'll scoop up all the stuff around it and throw it on top of it. And it'll burn for a bit. I think I'm cutting this, this tree down. It's been here nine years and it's never grown no taller. And I did everything too wet. I could to make it grow. Yeah, it's just, it gets too wet. It's just it's stagnant. So. Well, I'll hit it with the bobcat, knock it over sideways. I'll come around from the other side, knock it back that way, and take it out roots and all. Yep. All right. But I, if I nick that tree there with the bobcat, it's falling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I nick that one. Look at all the green on it, though, still. I know. With half of its whole trunk missing. But a lot of branches aren't green at all, showing half dead. But I'm looking at it like they're half alive. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that old poison song? Half alive or half dead, I just can't tell. It was, uh, oh my God, look what the cat dragged in. That burning through I got fast. a girl on the left of me, a girl on the right. I'm half alive or half dead, I just can't tell. That's what it was. Oh my God, look what the cat dragged in. Sin after sin. <laughs> I don't think the fire department will show up. <laughs> nah. And if they do, I have a fire, fire I, yep, there. I know, I so see. So we just got to run and get a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> yep. That's it. So if the fire department shows up, don't even talk. I'll talk to them. You run I in the house. Away. Yep, get some I know hot to dogs. Do. <laughs> Come back out. I got dinner, Rich. <laughs> Because you're not allowed to burn a recreational fire, but you are allowed to cook your dinner. Yep. So, if we have hot dogs here and a fire extinguisher, we're doing, we're completely legal. There's laws around laws. In Ten minutes and that fire is almost burned down. Now look at that. You can see the bottom of the uh, pine now. I can see the paddlefish really good when they swim by. Uh, yeah. Looking good. Oh, there's one right there. There's another right there. I see one there. They're, they're all over. Yeah, the pond is getting so much cleaner. You can see everything on the ledges. Absolutely everything. So, good job. All right. And then I've been talking to, uh, uh, actually I know her son, uh, Adam, and I just happened to be on Facebook and I'm like, Carol Black, that sounds familiar. I look her up, here Adam, it's Adam's mom, and I know the whole Black family basically, and Tom and Holly, they live up the street from me and their friends. She's got a nice pond with koi. Something happened, and she lost her koi and everything. She's got the pump and everything running and filling it. But she's going to need some koi. And uh, so I contacted her and said, hey girl, guess where I work? So these are koi that we've rescued recently, Carol, just to give you an idea. This is one of our holding tanks that we have. And uh, I'll go out in the front and show you some of the koi. But like when you're ready and you got your thing back together, I talked to Big Rich. And of course, we'll try and help you out. You know, with the sizes you need and so forth and so on. We can do that. That's what we're here for. Okay. We're going to have to do some serious talking. We either have to get this done like immediately or just leave it here and get these things all set up over here and get the stuff that I showed you in the bus earlier and get that set up on our tables and get the sale over with and done. And we need to have it. It's already going on the third week of June now. And I was hoping to have it the third or fourth week of June. So uh, we, we got to do something here. So I'll talk to Rich 
maybe we'll just start setting them up under here and have the sale here in the next week or two we gotta get this done i'll talk to him about it yeah glenn did a nice job of cleaning up he even got all the grass off of there too bad when you mow you can't can't help it but the grass gets inside the pond as well but pond's doing good we basically got to get back there got a lot of weeds the other day and uh dawn's been talking to her friend and uh i should have an answer any day because all the japanese blood grass died off so we got to redo that we're just going to put some pretty annuals in there and give some color out in front and uh depending on how many flowers we get we'll do something around the edges as well but pond's coming in nice i'm so glad that bobby got that out of there yeah that's good well josh started on it and them guys and he finished it but man oh man that's that's nice all right got a little running to do and we'll be back all right everybody hope you enjoyed the video a little bit of this a little bit of that getting ready for all kinds of different things but you know just cleaning up Yep, my tank is way overgrown. <laughs> I'm going to come in this weekend and get a lot of this bale out. <laughs> Man, it is just taking over everything. My fish are in there. I can see them hiding, which they love it. But <laughs> it's just a bit much. <laughs> But, uh, you know, got a couple things. Heard from Mike Wynn uh, up in Connecticut when we did that uh, New York trip. Uh, haven't even talked to Rich about it yet, but uh, he's going to be moving. And he was looking to donate all of, you know, his equipment and everything to OFR. So we got a couple things in the works. Uh, in the meantime, as always, stay fishy, my friends. Hit that like, subscribe, and share. And we'll go deeper with the Reaper.